Hello, I'm Michelle and welcome to Ripping Yarns, my new style monthly podcast, sharing my stories of handmade classic knitwear. This is not just another knitting channel, but a journey of discovery covering all my knitting projects, thoughts on patterns and stitch craft, tips and tricks, and of course showcasing my finished knitwear. Um, for those not familiar with my channel, you can find all my previous podcasts here. So I hope you find this channel useful so let's dive in. In this episode, I'm going to talk about Jaeger, which is one of my favorite brands, probably because it's known for its twin set and pearls image. So what did I find out about Jaeger? Well, it was founded in 1884 by Lewis Tomlin, a British businessman. It's currently owned by Marks & Spencer, believe it or not, because there's been a lot of history behind that brand. So what was it traditionally known for? Well, it's traditionally known for its high quality fibre. Originally, it was known for its long johns, as it was the first brand to focus on woolen fibres instead of cotton for, for undergarments and the British and Commonwealth troops used to wear the long johns in the wartime. So anyway, what happened after the war in 1930s, it switched to fashion. It was, it had its, actually it had its flagship store opened in Regent Street in the 1930s. And the clientele that it attracted, they wanted something that wasn't so expensive as Savile Row or Couture brands. So this was the next best thing. It was also known for its camel hair coats and use of exotic fibres such as cashmere, angora and alpaca. The Jaeger yarns were popularised in the 1940s. I think it was because of the wartime, um, people couldn't afford to buy from British brands and there was a scarcity. So that's when they introduced knitting patterns so that women could knit their own garments at half the price. So that was when the, it kicked off all the knitting patterns. Um, other interesting facts about Jaeger. Um, by the 1950s, a couple of models um, were Marilyn Monroe and Audrey Hepburn. In 1956, Jean Muir, the designer, took over the younger Jaeger brand to bring in a younger clientele because I think traditionally it was known just for the older people, but they wanted to bring in a younger clientele, so Jean Muir was the person to give it a young look about some of the brands. In 1962, Jean Shrimpton, the shrimp Shrimpton, modelled for the brand and David Bailey took some of those shots. And in 2009, it celebrated its 125th um, anniversary. I celebrated my birthday last week and I was able to find a book on Jaeger which is Jaeger 125 that celebrated 125 years of Jaeger. Um, I will add some links in my show notes so that you can find images within the book. And it's really worth having a look at some of the images and the graphics. Before I talk about my Jaeger knitting patterns and some of the projects that I finished, I want to share with you a couple of the actual Jaeger brand labelled knitwear that was machine knitted that I actually have in my collection. Um, I hope you like these um, samples. So the first one, um, I'm not sure what era this is, but this is a little merino number that I usually wear with my jeans. It shrunk a bit since I've <laughs> been washing it but it's like a nice little jersey and um, I do like things with collars 
or round crew neck. So this is one of my samples, which is that I, I quite like. It's like a little polo neck sample. Uh, the next one is a little stripy number um, that I think is, yeah, it's 100% wool, made in Great Britain. Again, a classic sample of the Jaeger brand. So that's another one. I do like stripes, as you know. And another stripe, which is a bit more sort of, my husband doesn't quite like this one, but I like this because this is like a fun sample. It looks sort of 60s beatnik but it's a classic, I don't think it's wool actually, this one is uh, man-made fibres acrylic called Tail, which was quite popular in the 60s, so I'm not sure, this could be 60s or 70s, but again, it's a fun, stripy, traditional Jaeger classic look. So that's just some of my samples. I do have another few jumpers of Jaeger. I've got some nice cashmere polos that I tend to wear with, with my work um, wear. So yeah, so I thought you'd, you'd like to see those samples. And now I'm going to focus on my Jaeger knitting patterns, which is my favorite aspect of Jaeger. The first knitting pattern I want to share with you is this little, obviously, stripy number. Um, this is what I'm actually wearing today. Um, I knitted it in Wendy 100% Merino and I actually used a metal zip, as you can see, um, a very small zip. Um, the reason I use metal is because I wanted to keep it as authentic as I could to the original pattern. Um, this is a really nice design actually. I find it very comfortable to wear. It might be a bit on the big side for me, uh, but basically I might have a bit more puff in my sleeve. Um, and I knitted it as close as I could to the original pattern. So there you go, that's a really, that's one of my favourite Jaegers. And I also knitted the hat to match. That wasn't from a Jaeger pattern, that was by using another pattern. So that's that one. Um, if you're interested in the Jaeger pattern, it's number 3066. I don't know if you can find it, it's quite rare. If you belong to the Knitting and Crochet Guild, then maybe they have a copy in their archive. Who knows? I'm not actually a, a member of the Knitting Crochet and Guild at the moment, but I might be interested in joining again just to see what they have in their archives. The next jumper I want to focus on is something I knitted quite a few years ago actually. Uh, this is the Jaeger 3350 pattern. It's a really nice fitted cardigan, quite tailored, and it was knitted on straight needles, uh, the back, two, two fronts, and the two sleeves, and also the collar. Um, my sample I knitted in, I don't know what kind of wool it was, but I knitted it in this beautiful lilac yarn. Um, I'm not, I wasn't quite happy with the finished result of it actually, I don't think it was perfect. I can't remember what kind of stitch I used but I don't think this sample was like 100% perfect but nevertheless uh, it was quite nice to knit and it's got nice little pockets. I finished it off with some nice little, I think they're vintage little buttons. Um, the collar, it was knitted in sections, so you had the two sides and a se separate section of the back. If I was to knit it again, I would probably knit it in one piece just to give it a smoother finish. So that's that, it's quite weighty. Um, I should really wear it, I haven't worn that for ages. Uh, recently, um, I had some yarn left over, so I knitted a little beret to match which might make me more inclined to wear it. So that's that one. Uh, the next sample I have is this 
really old pattern. I think this must be a 30s or 40s pattern. And as you can see, it's a beautiful fitted number with a, an interesting collar. I've knitted it in two different colourways. Um, this one you've probably seen on one of my earlier podcasts, I was wearing it. Uh, it's knitted in a beautiful merino wool, another Wendy merino four-ply wool. Um, it's got quite a sort of open textured look to it, quite see-through, so you'd have to wear a vest underneath it. But I normally wear it for work and I use a nice, have a nice little brooch in the middle to wear it with. And to go with that, as I like everything to match, I knitted myself a turban, as I had enough yarn, and a snood. So I've got a snood and a turban to match that one. So that's two of my samples. Um, the next one I'm going to talk about is the one on my mannequin, which I last year I took two weeks holiday from work and I knitted the whole cardigan in that two weeks. Um, as you know, I work full time, so it's really difficult for me to knit constantly. So because I had two weeks holiday, I decided, right, I'm going to knit for two weeks solid and see what I can come up with. Anyway, so that beautiful number over there, um, the special thing about it, I'll show you the pattern. Um, I think it's a 1960s pattern and on here it's got the matching beret. Now the beret pattern didn't come with this one so I actually have the leaflet for the beret pattern on this leaflet here. So yeah, so I had enough yarn which believe it or not was the actual yarn that matched the pattern which is a Jaeger pebble spun yarn in a raspberry ice. Next I want to talk about my works in progress. As you know I haven't filmed anything for a few months now so I have been busy behind the scenes. So first off I want to share with you um, one of my works in progress which is from a 1936 stitch craft. Uh, this one's from a book but I do actually have this Stitchcraft edition in storage, so I can't show you my current um, version of my original pattern, but this is where I'm following the pattern in this book, uh, this Susan Crawford book. So everyone's familiar with that one. Um, I decided to knit, rather than in cotton, uh, knit with a pure wool, um, as you can see, it's quite, a, quite an interesting construction, this design. There's quite a few pieces. You've got two parts of the sleeve, and then you've got a cuff that has to go on it. And then you've got the collar, which comes in a, about four different pieces. So, as I said, it's got a huge construction. It's a bit like dressmaking with knitwear. Um, so I'm currently <laughs> surrounded by all these pieces. Some of this has got pins in it. Um, it doesn't look anything if you look at these pieces. So this is quite a challenge for me. And so at some point, it's probably gonna take quite a while, maybe over a weekend, I will need to press these pieces and then start constructing it, maybe tacking it into place. Um, I do actually want to include an actual belt um, to go with this project. Uh, this is the belt. I haven't quite finished it yet. I bought some buckram, which is quite wide, so I don't really know how wide my belt needs to be. Um, as the buckram I bought was quite wide, I might actually just decide to cut it and then sort of wrap this round it so yeah so i next need to decide how how wide my belt is going to be so when that's finished i will share it with you but that's been sitting in the bag for a few weeks now 
Um, the other uh, thing I'm working on at the moment is from the Knitted Garments for, Mal for All um, little 1940s book, and it's called The Lace Stitch Jersey, which is knitted in four ply. It's a really pretty little afternoon jumper. I particularly like the lace detail and also the nice neck. Um, I find it a challenge knitting with lace. One of my favourite kinds of knitting is fair roll, but with lace, because it's there's a lot of wool full words knitting two together, and this one's got a 12 row pattern, I have struggled. If I haven't been able to concentrate and I have to put it down and then pick it up, I've struggled with it. So I've kind of procrastinated a bit on this pattern. But as you can see here, um, I've got my pieces all coming together now. I've knitted the front and the back. So I've put them both together. So that's the front and that's the back. So it, it's, it has come up on the big side. Um, I don't know if that's just me. Maybe I should have knitted it on smaller needles, but it's a really pretty little lace pattern that I have struggled with, but I did actually manage to get there in the end. Um, I've knitted one sleeve, so the sleeve is going to be quite nice and puffy. And I'm currently in the process of knitting the second sleeve, and I went into work yesterday, and I started knitting the collar. It's so pretty that you know it's quite interesting <laughs> don't ask me how it it all works out but there's a lot of increasing decreasing in this pattern but it's fascinating how you get this pointed collar so that's nice um the yarn i use actually isn't 100 wool it's a vintage yarn and it's a sirdar wash and wear crate that knits a four ply but it's actually made with a combination of nylon and acrylic, but it really knits up lovely. Now I have 200 grams left of this yarn, so I could actually knit another sweater, maybe a striped one, with a, like contrast it with another colour. Um, I've actually the reason I picked up this yarn again is because I've actually got a little sweater that I work, wear for work which is from a 1940s this, um, pattern. Um, this, I've worn it so many times and it really washes well, it never shrinks, but obviously because it's not 100% wool, then it's quite, you know, it's, that's probably why the label says wash and wear, but it's a lovely little jumper. And I actually wear it with a snood. So I thought, well, if I knit something else in that, then I've got a snood that I can wear with this other jumper. So I'm looking forward to wearing that. Um, another thing I've knitted recently, I don't know if I started it from my last podcast, probably not, but I promised myself I was going to knit some more Fair Isle. I love Fair Isle. It's just a really good way of using up scrap yarns. Um, as I've got like a huge shelf full of vintage yarn, I've got loads of oddments. So sort of 50 grams here, 50 grams there it's a good way of using up those oddments. So on a previous episode, I showed you this little fair old vest that I've knitted recently. Uh, this is really nice, I love fair old, and knitting a vest, it doesn't take so long as knitting a jumper. But it's a really nice colorway. I'm, I'm really into my sort of earthy browns and greens at the moment. So I wanted to knit a beret to match. So I can't remember what pattern I used, but this is, my little design it worked out quite well and i put a nice little detail on the little rib around the head so yeah i'm really pleased with that so that's perfect little matchy matchy for that um just hot off my needles is a little fair old sort of norwegian style which was from the greenock greenock double knitting pattern um, I think this is 19, like probably late 1960s, looking at the models. Now it's quite 
uh, it says double knitting, but knit double, so it could have actually been an Aran weight sweater, and it's quite baggy, but I didn't want baggy, I like a more fitted design, so I just adjusted my needle size to adapt so that I had a more fitted version, and because I wanted something to wear that went under my duffel coat, which is like a nice camel colour, um, I knitted it in earthy browns. Um, the wool I bought actually was from a charity shop. Just after Christmas, I went to a local charity shop in one of my lunch breaks and I managed to find some really nice yarn. It's 80% wool, 20% merino serdar. Oh, sorry, that's not the one. Um, yeah, so it was like 500 gram balls of wool. And I thought that was perfect, and that spurred me on. So that's when I started the jumper, um, straight after Christmas. So it's already completed, so it didn't take me long at all. And I've actually knitted a little hat to match, a little bobble hat. So here's the finished object. As you can see, it's really nice earthy colours. It's got the beautiful green that I knitted uh, my other half's sweater in and I had some nice um, wool, pure wool beige and yeah so as you can see it is quite fitted this version it's not as baggy as the original but it fits perfectly so I was quite pleased with that and we've got the fair roll on the back as well so yeah it come out quite well so I think I'm going to knit another one of those at some point maybe in blues and the little hat to match. I actually had two attempts at knitting the hat. Uh, the first time, I don't think my needles were large enough. So I knitted this hat and it's so tiny, it could fit a baby. Actually, it fitted my cat. Um, at some point, I'll show you a picture of my cat wearing it. But it's really, like, cute. But, yeah, so I actually wore this when I went out for my birthday last week. So it got to its debut. Well, that's all for this episode. If you've enjoyed this podcast, then, then please like and subscribe to my channel. I welcome all your comments and suggestions. See you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.